folks welcome to legacy ias in today's video we'll be looking into multilateralism and multiculturalism in a globalized world on top of it it just looks like certain keywords put together and formed into a title well it actually is in a way we'll look into it as to how is this a defining ideology okay now before we begin what is multilateralism see the name multilateral so something in a lateral manner or lateral here again means that an arrangement okay for example unilateral okay this is an arrangement which affects or benefits okay one party bilateral it's an arrangement or agreement between two party so when it is an arrangement or an agreement between three or more members it's called a multilateral agreement or multilateralism okay now today we live in a world which is connected right now when it is connected and we can communicate from america to australia right from your northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere that is if people live in southern hemisphere so the whole point is it can, it is connected and we can communicate easily such kind of world is called a globalized world so a globalized world we mean multiple actors here by actors we mean the parties the multiple states right so now we have different organizations yes for example south asian bloc east asian bloc right your bimstec all right your brics your wto your unga okay your unesco wto your unesco your wto basically all your regional groupings all right the g20 g7 g8 g4 all of these are nothing but groupings similarly when three or more parties come together and form a group or a party which is beneficial for all of the members okay largely we use the word largely because it doesn't mean that every single person has to be benefited it comes at a cost one person's benefit and another is another person's loss right so largely it is beneficial for every member involved in it that is why they coming into a grouping when that particular scenario takes form okay it happens in a very large scale that entire theory is called multilateralism okay as we say the the, the principle of participation by three or more parties is called multilateralism it consists of some qualitative principles which define character of the institution or arrangement now when we say multilateralism it has some defining features to it what are those diffusion of reciprocity that is only i cannot be like we spoke earlier one person's benefit should be, will be mostly another person's loss but that should not be the case if i am also giving some benefit you also should give me some benefit right that's how the agreement works right indivisibility among participants on interest right as it is says a system to settle disputes when a large number of people are there they do need a system to settle disputes because disputes are bound to occur okay now this concept of multilateralism is it something new or has it been there since long time yeah. it has been there since a long time but it gained importance post your world war 2 okay now as we discussed your nato wto unesco brics g20 g7 g8 etc all the groupings right we form under multilateralism why multilateralism is important is because we live in a globalized connected world okay now what are the objectives of this so called multilateralism that we discussed okay developing a bond among powerful nations discouraging unilateralism the principle which is like i my country my people are enough the betterment of that okay if that is seen then one person's benefit will be another person's loss we come back and circle around the same theory but that is not good for a connected world because now the world is seen as one entity rather than division of subunits yeah enabling smaller powers to voice their opinions and exercise their wishes majority minority principle okay is because some section is in majority it cannot voice out the minority that occurs in the international relations or international sphere also okay what is the outcome of multilateralism now this is such a good concept the world as one everyone has to be seen in a way that it benefits everyone 
but does it occur the same way in real world right now multilateralism is not very effective because the principles are said to be an ideal situation yes there are multiple occasions multiple organizations multiple arrangements agreements that were being not multiple arrangements that were not being honored multiple arrangements that were not being honored all right there were times when certain countries overstepped there was times where someone there were times where certain countries were overstepped okay they were overbordered overpowered overshadowed okay all this has happened in the international sphere okay now globalization disillusionment again not keeping up with contemporary complexities all these are certain issues that is facing the multilateralism okay now what is india's take on multilateralism so india's foreign policy is always based on this concept of vasudev kutumbakam which means the world is one family okay as gandhi said do not separate politics from ethics just in, in this one aspect lastly vasudev kutumbakam is our both ethical and our political aspect okay so our foreign policy supports multilateralism and we have honored our commitment to multilateral agreements and agencies okay next we move on to multiculturalism as the name states many cultures now we said globalized world yes when people are coming together from different areas different backgrounds different cultures it is bound that in a place where when multiple people are coming together as one okay they all come from different backgrounds different upbringing different tradition different values different culture etc but for them all to feel as one and one home and one globalized country world or earth whatever we call it if that should be the scenario then each one of them okay should be respective should be respectable about the other person's view or their take only then will it be sustainable for everyone to live on this planet all right so what exactly does this multiculturalism mean see amalgamation of different races nationalities language religion class gender etc okay basically it's a belief that different culture okay coming together people from that all have equal rights there is no one superiority no one inferiority all are equal all cultures are equal okay irrespective and regardless of how different it is from the culture you have been brought up in what are the types of multiculturalism liberal multiculturalism where individuals are free to express their personal choices without states interference okay pluralist multiculturalism again as it states respecting values of various cultures regardless of how different they are okay pluralism again multiple cosmopolitan multiculturalism now when we say cosmopolitan the word is cosmo cosmos world okay here are the people if i say i am a cosmopolitan person bangalore is a cosmopolitan city that is here we don't strictly abide by telling that i am from this place my ethnicity is this place. it's not that it's by telling i belong to this place now when i say cosmopolitan multiculturalism cosmo cosmos okay means world when i say i am a cosmopolitan person bangalore is a cosmopolitan city it's just that here it's an amalgamation okay rather than this place having its own thing okay the people of this place amalgamate and give it a nature okay give it a nature and give it a character to the place which means that irrespective of my place i am one this is one world i have one citizenship and that is to the world okay next what is the impact okay now the opposite of multiculturalism is communalism communalism is defined as a blind devotion to a particular group okay when i believe that i and my religion or my ethnicity or my language is way more important way more superior compared to the other that leads to communalism okay that is exact opposite of the culture that majority places thrive to that majority places thrive to 
succeed that is multiculturalism okay multiculturalism offers a way of living with ties to their past present and future in a globalized world that is an advantage of multiculturalism again here also we have seen where conditions of hate crimes okay radicalization all this are being seen which affects and impacts your multicultural tendency okay how is multiculturalism in india india is one of the most culturally diverse countries in the world pretty much known eighth schedule of the indian constitution list 22 official languages there are statistics that show that india has 1632 different languages and dialects pretty strong for a multicultural tag okay what are the constitutional provisions in india supporting multiculturalism article 25 of indian constitution gives its citizens the fundamental right to freedom of conscience practice any religion spread any religion and profess any religion okay this applies for both language and religion multiculturalism in general is for language ethnicity religion etc your personal beliefs choices as long as it is not affecting the other person or the society at large then i think it's pretty safe to follow your own thing in your personal space now we've been speaking about this word cosmopolitanism what exactly is that it's just meaning that it includes people from different countries okay the general idea behind cosmopolitanism is that all human beings are members of a single community okay irrespective of wherever you are from okay world citizens world is their country the idea encompasses different dimensions and avenues such as promoting universal moral standards establishing global political structures developing platform for mutual cultural expression and tolerance right as we said globalized world as in more and more we getting globalized more and more we have to keep a look and a tab on these things once the very basic tendencies of globalization gets keeps getting affected okay the very basic connectivity of the world starts falling now the connectivity is not just mobilization this connectivity as sustenance in prolonging sustenance in producing okay the production for future generations all this halts thus the life on its very own will halt okay again as we have been speaking sufficiently about globalization globalization means free movement of goods services and people across the world in a seamless and integrated manner okay so what does globalization means socially it means greater interaction among various population yeah now culturally what does that mean it means exchange of ideas values artistic expression among different cultures okay economically it is free flow of goods which means addition to the economy okay psychologically it creates a sense of universal home rather than homesickness right if you are from a particular place and you go live in a particular place you're bound to feel homesick but that is natural bound to happen but that shouldn't happen at a cost that you don't feel yourself in the new place where you feel alienated okay that is not a feature of globalism or globalization okay now again as we discuss from multilateralism is globalization a new concept or has it existed before too okay globalization has accelerated or increased okay since the 18th century due to advances in transportation and communication okay this increase in global interaction has caused a growth in international trade and exchange of ideas and culture okay now we've spoken about various ideas or ideologies and how is it affecting okay or is it at all affecting india and the country or the world as its own okay right now we are a generation who has witnessed a pandemic the covid 19 a globalized world is closing its doors its borders during the pandemic we saw that many of the countries had to close their borders had to close their doors which meant the supply chain got cut off which meant the vitalities which had to come from those countries also got cut off the globalized world as we kept on saying now is trying to emulate and become unilateral in nature yeah that is it is just playing importance on its people its country its geography 
yes that affected a globalist world in ways that we couldn't fathom right when was that more higher during relief efforts drug distribution vaccine manufacturing etc kind of scenarios where we had to make sure the world had to be moving but that is where the world came to a halt right at this point of time india stepped see when most developed countries closed their doors and concentrated on their betterment india stepped up okay it started be it in war speed in pandemic disaster management anything it stepped up its position when everyone kept closing india kept rising okay that indicates okay that indicates a commitment to multilateralism multiculturalism globalization cosmopolitanism all these ideas which were just terms came to be a reality a stepping stone of success for india during these difficult times okay now what did it do okay it promoted tolerance peace harmony it helped its neighbors counterparts any idea okay or ideology when put into action okay changes okay changes the world and its relevant and associated complexity as the world started becoming more complex the world in general or the ideas in general whatever we discussed also should begin evolving okay unless and until that happens it becomes to stagnate and more and more world order problems are created okay thus india is thus showing its belief and support in its action and world vasudev kutumbakam or world is my home so this ideologies or ideas how it is affecting the contemporary world we have seen if you like these videos please like share and subscribe to our channel and pass it along to